in a market this ugly, you know I think it's tempting to start picking some of those beaten down stocks, especially the ones with what I call AHYs. That's accidentally high yielders. But if you're going to start buying dividend stocks on the way down, there's one important caveat. You've got to make sure that the dividend is money good. Because it, it, it's, if it's not safe, well, then you can get clobbered. Which brings me to the new Dow Inc. That's the commodity chemical maker that was spun off a year ago as part of the Dow DuPont merger slash breakup. Over the past month, this stock has been obliterated, losing more than half of its value because the commodity chemical business is highly cyclical, meaning it's very sensitive to changes in the economy. Thanks to the sell-off, Dow now sports an eye-popping 12.7% dividend yield. Wowza. At these levels, you've got to wonder if the stock's too cheap to ignore. But we need to make sure the dividend is safe before we can even consider owning something like this into the teeth of what looks to be a big global recession. So let's take a closer look with Jim Fitterling. He's the CEO of Dow Inc. to get a better read on how his company's weathering a very tough environment. Mr. Fitterling, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks for having me, Jim. Nice to talk to you. Always good to talk to you, Jim. And I've got to tell you, the market is saying that your dividend is not sustainable because Dow's related to the price of oil, because Dow's related to uh, giant cyclical portions of the economy, and that because the coronavirus is going to make it so you will have much less business. Uh, you're a worldwide company. You've already seen what happens in China. You're familiar with what's going on in Europe. Why is the market perhaps wrong about that judgment? Well, our demand is good right now, Jim. And in fact, the last two weeks, we've seen our demand in China bounce back. And so I think when you consider that that coronavirus incident started in really in February for them, and we've already started to see a recovery from that, I think that tells us that we can see the same thing wash through the economy here. When it gets to the dividend, I think people need to remember that we took a lot of actions in 2019 as we came out as the new Dow. We paid down $3 billion worth of uh, debt. Uh, we also just recently tapped the euro bond market for 2.25 billion euros of 1% debt, which we used to move our debt maturities out till the end of 2023. We started the year with 2.4 billion of cash. Our dividend is 2.1 billion for the year. And we've got tailwinds this year of another billion, which we have lower transaction costs this year versus last and another billion of non-operating cash impact items. So I think what people are looking at, you know, the, the market's full of fear, mm -hmm. uncertainty, and doubt, and they may project that onto the dividend, but as you said, it's an artificially high dividend yield. We're in a much, much different financial position than we've been, and we did it deliberately to be ready to go into a down cycle after an, about a 10- to 11-year bull run in this market. Now, uh, can you explain to people the relationship with oil? And also, have you oil tested your dividend, so to speak? So if oil were to drop to, say, 25, 23, would it still be okay to pay that size dividend? We did. We stress tested our uh, operating EBITDA as we went into the new Dow and we spun out and we tested that dividend. We tested it as low as a $6 billion EBITDA. And, you know, today, if it went to $5 billion, we've stress tested it and we'd be able to protect it at that level. We've got very clear priorities for cash as we go into the year. Our first is the dividend. Our second is obviously we're going to maintain and operate the assets. So that's $800 million to $1 billion for us to do that, to operate them safely and reliably. And then, obviously, we would like to pay down another $500 million to $1 billion of debt with cash. We're going to cover dilution and share buybacks, and then we'll look at what we've got available as we move from here. And the other thing I would say is CapEx uh, was one of those things. We started the year with a $1.5 billion CapEx program. That's down from last year at $2 billion. I would also tell you we're really physically going to have a hard time to spend one and a half, mainly because the limitations on people moving around, contractors, engineers, and the people that we need to execute those projects, I think is going to uh, be a real limitation for us for the year. As far as oil price, you know, the other thing that I think has been overdone a little bit here is that oil price dropping $30 a barrel in this environment. I don't think the current pricing that we're at is sustainable. The replacement values are much higher than that. And what we see happening in the futures market is people are starting to move in and rent very large crude carriers to store that oil because they think this is going to turn around. Okay. Now, you uh, obviously are putting your money where your mouth is, as are two directors. 
You, uh, Jeff Fedig, we know from Whirlpool, uh, uh, Bush, Wesley, you've all bought stock. Uh, just talk about the size of the that you bought, because it's pretty impressive. Well, I, I bought Friday morning. After seeing Thursday's move, I went in Friday morning and <clears throat> told the office that I wanted to buy some stock, and, and was I cleared to be able to do that? And I bought 20,000 shares. Uh, you know, look, I, I think this thing has been overdone. Uh, I happened—the market feels like 1987 to me. I was yes. a sales rep for Dow in 1987, and I saw this same kind of reaction in the financial markets. And at the time, I just took whatever free cash I had, and I bought Dow stock at 24. And it felt very much like it to me that this had been overdone. And I understand uh, when people get afraid and, and there's a lot of uncertainty that they want to pull back. But I also understand when we get below some very good intrinsic values. And I've seen how these markets can rebound. These oil markets can shift back. We've seen moves like this before when you go down $30 a barrel, and, and in some cases, by the end of the year, you could be back right where you were at the beginning of the year. I want this question. Obviously, we're all concerned about health and safety. You have a lot of plants. You have plants everywhere. You have plants in Spain, plant in the United States. Uh, what are you doing to make sure? Can you run plants safely? With uh, Do you send people home? How do you handle it? Yeah, we can run safely. So anybody that can work from home is able to work from home, and we encourage them to do that. When you're in the plant operating environment, we have several operators who would be in control rooms or out in the field. It is not a very dense environment, so they have plenty of social distancing, and we've amped up the hygiene within those spaces for them. Um, we're also making sure that our Dow medical facilities monitor health and checking temperatures and doing those kinds of things. So we're following all the protocols that um, everybody else in the industry is following. We're teleconferencing uh, whenever we can. Um, I might come into the office to use the video conference, but most of my day is spent on the phone, and that can be done from home as well. Well, look, Jim, I really appreciate you coming on. Most people are running for cover, and you came right toward us and told us a very good story. I want to thank you so much, Jim Fitterling, Dow Inc. CEO. Good to see you as always, sir. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Take care. All through America, this is what's happening, and I can't tell you that that things are great, obviously. I can give you the facts, and that's what Jim Fitterling just did. Dow Inc. They have money's back in. Right. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.